Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship this morning. No matter where you are, no matter who you're with, no matter what life circumstances you find yourselves in, it is always good to be together in this way as we give praise to the God who made heaven and earth. This morning, uh, we're going to look at a scripture that talks about seeds. Jesus was fascinated with seeds and all the potential that they held and the things that they could grow into and the mystery of why some seeds grew and others did not. Uh, We're going to look at what's often called the parable of the sower, the farmer who scatters seed in all different ways. So as we begin our service this morning, we're going to focus on one of the scriptures, which is Psalm 25. Uh, And we have a short uh, video with some music that has the words to the psalm, which begins, Show me your ways, Lord. And as we watch this together and learn more about the psalm, I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer and pray to God that God will show you God's ways in a new way this morning. Here's a message from Psalm 25. as we gather our hearts and minds together in prayer this morning. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, you are good, and your mercy endures forever and ever, and for this Holy One we give you thanks this day. We pray this morning that you will continue to show us your way, to unfold your path before us so that we may follow it all the days of our life and goodness and mercy will travel with us. We pray this day for the people we love, God, especially those who are near to you, those you call blessed, not because they are strong, but because They are tender. We pray for those who are sick, that they may be healed. We pray for those who mourn, that they may be comforted. We pray for those who are peacemakers in a world that is so full of conflict and war. Help us to see that they are your children, God. We pray for the meek and the small, for they, we know that in your kingdom, God, these are precious and strong. We 
Holy One, in these conflicted times, we pray for our community, for those who are suffering under the burden of racism as well as the burden of coronavirus. Help us to find strength to work for healing and justice, God. We pray for our country, for wisdom and courage to flow through this place and fill our leaders. Inspire them to seek the common good, the healing of the nation, and to remember that the widow and the orphan and the stranger are precious in your sight. God, we pray for the world, for people we love in the Philippines, in Canada, in Hong Kong, in so many other countries. Help us to remember that even when we cannot see each other and feel so separate, that we are not alone, that we are part of your invisible web of creation. And that even when people are miles and miles apart from us, they are still our brothers and sisters in your love. God, as we gather for worship in this way, on this day, we remember the one who came to us in solidarity with us not just to show us the way, but to become the way and to become a traveler with us on the road. So on this day, as we remember Jesus, we pray also the prayer that he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some of you know that during this time of quarantine, when we're uh, staying home and wearing masks when we can't stay home, that it's been hard to find things to do around the house. So I have done a lot of cooking and I have done some spring cleaning that was long overdue. I have done jigsaw puzzles. I have read books. And one of the things that I have done that I've enjoyed the most 
that has connected me to the world outside my own little brain was to hang up a bird feeder. And so this morning, as we reflect on seeds and what uh, some scholars refer to as Jesus's parable of the sower, I thought I would tell you another kind of parable. A parable is a story that's a really simple story, but if you stop and think about it, it has kind of a surprising ending or a surprising meaning. And so before we look at scripture, I thought I would tell you a parable from my own backyard. This is the parable of the bird feeder. A couple of years ago, my parents sent me as a gift a little wire bird feeder. It was in the shape of a red and black ladybug, and it was designed to be hung by a chain uh, from a railing on the porch. Now, I hadn't hung this bird feeder in a while, but during quarantine, I decided it was time to get the bird feeder back out. So I got some bird seed, filled up the ladybug bird feeder, hung it up on my porch, and waited to see what would happen. Sure enough, as expected, little bitty birds started to show up to the feeder. They would hang on to the mesh of the feeder with their talons. Sometimes they'd hang upside down and they'd get all of the seeds they could and then they'd fly away quickly. And some of the birds, like the sparrows, I recognized, but soon enough there were enough different kinds of birds coming to my feeder that I had to buy a book. So I got a book all about the backyard birds in Washington, and I learned the difference between a sparrow and a wren and a junco and all a nuthatch, all other different kinds of birds that I'd never heard of before, but who I was learning to recognize, who I was learning to love. And sometimes birds who couldn't even eat from the feeder would show up, and hummingbirds would duel it out for the right to perch on this feeder, even though it had no flowers and no nectar. My bird feeder became something of a neighborhood hangout for the birds. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen birds eat from a feeder, but they're not very neat. They get out as many seeds as they can. They spill a whole bunch of them on the ground, sometimes the shells, sometimes all of the seed. And soon enough, word got out, not just to the bird community, but to others in the neighborhood, that this little red and black bird feeder was hanging on my porch. And so soon we had other kinds of visitors at well, as well. At first, it was the squirrels. This is a squirrel that we named so fat for obvious reasons. And that not only the birds, but the squirrels would come every day and eat the seeds that the birds had left behind. Well, pretty soon, other neighborhood animals started watching the squirrels, seeing that something was going on. And then mice showed up. And then rats showed up. And pretty soon, a raccoon showed up to investigate all of this action on my back porch that started with this little mesh bird feeder that had been a gift from my parents. So, in addition to the sparrows and nuthatches, the mice and the rats and the squirrels and the raccoons, one day I looked under my back porch and I discovered this animal had made himself a dwelling. And with a little research, I learned that my porch was now the home to a northern alligator lizard who was quite happy living underneath the bird feeder. I expressed some concern about all of this activity to a friend of mine who's a gardener, who's a farmer. And she said, when animals like those lizards show up, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It means that the place that they're choosing to live is healthy, that it's part of an ecosystem that can support all kinds of plants, all kinds of animals, all kinds of life living together. The lizard living under your porch, she said, 
is not a bad sign. It's a sign of health. And it's a sign of abundant life. Now, I still don't know how I feel about that rat. But when I think about my bird feeder, that started out as such a small project, just something to entertain me looking out my kitchen window onto my porch. And I think about how much life was generated and how much my yard was changed just by that one gesture. I'm amazed. You see, God can do so much with so little. And sometimes, when I remember, the best thing I can do to help God do amazing work in the world is to do just one thing and then let go of the outcome and let God do the rest. If I had planned, if I had tried to plan a backyard that would be a a home to mice and raccoons and lizards and all kinds of birds, I would never have started with a little mesh feeder full of black sunflower seeds. But somehow, God took the one thing that I knew how to do and multiplied it and grew it and expanded it into something that I never could have imagined on my own. The scripture that we heard this morning is from the 13th chapter of Matthew, and it's called the parable of the sower. A sower is a farmer, somebody who throws out seed. And the seed that this farmer throws out lands all kinds of places. It lands on a path. It lands among the thorns. It lands on shallow, rocky soil. It lands on good, rich soil. And different things happen to the seed depending on where it lands. And if we were to continue reading in this uh, parable in the 13th chapter of Matthew, this is one of the few stories in the Bible that attaches a meaning to the parable. And if you want to look it up, you can. It says the stony uh, soil is like this, and the good soil is like this, and the path is like this. But that's not the part I want to focus on right now. Rather than focusing on all the different kinds of soil, I want to think about the foolishness of that farmer. Most gardeners and farmers I know, if they want to plant something, will find a very particular place cultivate a very particular kind of soil in a very particular way, and that, and only that, is where they will put their seeds. That's not what this farmer does. This farmer, this sower, takes seed and scatters it everywhere, not paying attention to what kind of soil is deserving of the seed, what kind of soil is ready for the seed, just everywhere, everywhere. And all different things kind of happen, kind of like what happened with the parable of the bird feeder. Sure enough, in this story as well, some birds fly down and eat, gobble up the seed. Some seeds are choked out by the thorns, and the landscape changes in that way. Some seeds take root and produce grain and are multiplied in that way. So often we read this story And we think we have to be the right kind of person to be loved by God. We have to be good soil, ready to receive the love that God has to give. And there's some truth in that. There's some truth in the need to cultivate a right spirit within ourselves. And yet... God's grace is so abundant, so enormous, so foolish, really, that it spills out all over the whole world, whether we deserve it or not. God is like a foolish farmer who scatters love across creation. 
and amazing things, unexpected things, things that sometimes feed birds and thorn bushes happen as a result. If this is a new way of looking at this story for you, I would encourage you to look at the rest of the stories in this chapter of the Bible. Jesus, as I mentioned at the beginning, was fascinated with seeds, and he tells all sorts of other stories about seeds and what happens. The next parable in this section of scripture in Matthew 13 is about the weeds and the wheat growing up together and the farmer saying, don't worry about it. Just let leave the weeds alone. It'll all be sorted out later. Or there's the story of the mustard seed. Tiny little thing that grows into this great big shrub, a weed, really, that in Matthew houses all sorts of birds who come and make their nests in their branches. Seeds for Jesus, seeds for the writer of the Gospel of Matthew, not only hold potential for goodness, for growth, they hold the potential for the unexpected to spring up, to mix people up, to put weeds growing in a field next to wheat. Seeds hold potential for growth that is planned and for growth that we could not possibly imagine. And friends, I would invite you to consider that the love of God has so much potential. It's like a seed, and we don't know who it will feed, and we don't know where it will grow, and we don't know what kind of animals will come and dwell inside that love, what kind of other people in our lives will come and dwell inside that love. Maybe that part is not ours to know. But if God is like a foolish farmer who scatters love everywhere, without worrying about whether people deserve it or not, then I invite you to consider the possibility that we too are invited to be foolish. We too are invited to love this world lavishly, with ridiculous generosity to worry less about whether our love is a waste of time, to worry less about whether our love will really get anything done or not, and simply to love, to give, to love as Jesus loved, and then to release the outcome to God. maker of heaven and earth, who loves us with the foolishness of a really bad farmer. Amen. Friends, our next song celebrates the goodness of creation of seeds and birds and squirrels and lizards. It's for the beauty of the earth. The words will be on your screen. You can sing along or just sit back and let this beauty wash over you. God, to thee we raise this 
our sacrifice of praise for thyself best gift divine to the world so freely given for that great great love of Christ our God, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. Receive now this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up God's face to you. And may God give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.